Hello people, Hectate here. Today I'm going to talk about a control option for Star Citizen. I've been playing a lot since I started during the free fly in November of 21, and like many players, I began with the input option that was already available to me, mouse and keyboard. Recently though, I acquired a flight stick to replace half of that setup, specifically the VKB Gladiator NXT Evo with the Omni Throttle attachment. Now, as noted, this is a single flight stick. This is because I opted for a control scheme called HOSAM, or hands-on stick and mouse. In this video, I'll show you how to set up this control scheme. When doing my pre-purchase research, I noticed that there was a lot less information about this setup, and I wanted to help by bringing more attention to this option. Note that this video is not a review of the Gladiator. Many videos are out there for that, and you can go watch those instead if you like. But since we're here, I'll say it's a good value, and I do recommend it. And I do also feel the same way about my mouse, the Logitech G602. Also, a quick shout-out to Avenger1, whose videos on flight controls were helpful in my quest to figure out how all this worked. Now, you might be asking, why go with a stick and mouse instead of just dual sticks? And I get it. Dual sticks are popular because they work really well for this and are very immersive. The answer is simply my budget. While I could have afforded an entry-level dual stick or stick and throttle setup, I wanted to spend my money on something that I could be confident that it would last. I didn't want to be replacing broken sticks or dealing with faulty, glitchy controls. And because of this, and with a friend's recommendation, I began looking into higher-quality single-stick setups and discovered that when combined with a mouse, I could get dual-stick levels of control but only have to invest in a single flight stick. Now, I am right-handed, and that hand has decades of finely tuned mouse control experience, so it made sense to get a left-handed stick for everything else. Additionally, I chose the Omni Throttle version because I do like the palm-down ergonomics of the angled stick, and as a left-handed stick, it also makes sense as a sort of throttle-style control. And before we start the setup proper, of course, I'm going to give you a brief disclaimer. I'm not claiming to be a great pilot. Uh, in fact, the video you're watching right now proves otherwise, okay? <laughs> so. I'm not saying that this is the correct or best way to do this. Uh, this video, however, is about showing you what I chose to do because it works for my use. I do highly recommend that you think carefully about your needs and set up your controls to meet those needs. Um, in the first week that I had the flight stick, I did manage to surpass my best keyboard and mouse time on the old Vanderbilt racetrack, uh, which is what I was using to test how different setups worked for me. Sure. If you're coming from keyboard and mouse, and looking to switch this like me, uh, my philosophy with the choices that I made was to minimize the need to unlearn things. So the transition to the setup should feel like a natural evolution of what we are already doing and be very easy to adopt. Now, to start, we're going to ignore the physical hardware. They're not relevant yet. Before we even look at them, we have to ask ourselves, what actions are the most important to me? So we need to know what to prioritize when we get to actually dealing with the hardware itself. So the first thing I did is list out all of the actions that I needed quick access to. These are the highest priority inputs. They are the, the must-haves, okay? That included, of course, the rotational axes, pitch, yaw, and roll, the translational axes like strafing up, down, left, and right, as well as your forward and reversed thrust, uh, and I'll even include boost in that sort of comment, you know, your afterburners. You also would want uh, weapon controls like firing, being able to missile toggle mode, um, even increase or decrease your missile count, perhaps. And then uh, countermeasures, obviously very important, your noise and decoy and even your decoy count, as well as your power triangle assignments for shields, weapons, and uh, powered engines. I also followed that up with a list of actions that I wanted access to without removing my hands from either the stick or the mouse. Uh, these are the sort of nice-to-have inputs instead. That would be target selection, accessing the MFDs, uh, adjustments to the actual throttle limiter, and even the space brake could be handy at times if uh, you don't want to go into sort of, a, I don't know, counterbalancing your own thrust instead. Now, the important thing here about all this is that everything in the first group should have as much simultaneity as possible. In other words, performing any of these actions should not prevent us from doing one or more of the others at the same time. 
The way to achieve this, of course, is by applying those actions to inputs that don't block each other. So to figure that out, we now need to evaluate what inputs we can apply with our chosen interface, that being our flight stick and mouse as being controlled by two hands. We're about to list out our available inputs, but we want to group things into inputs that are blocking and not blocking, and I want to define that first. So to define what I mean by that, I'll demonstrate with the left thumb, in this case, available inputs. If we look at the options presented to us, we have two upper hat switches, an analog thumbstick, a button, and another lower hat switch not seen in this picture here. All those are accessible by my thumb. No matter what else is going on, however, our left thumb will only be able to manipulate one of those inputs at a time. The others are then blocked from use. If we are pushing the red button, as seen here, we are blocked from using any of these hat switches or the analog thumbstick or, of course, the unseen lower hat switch. No matter what is going on for our left thumb, we're not being prevented from using, say, the trigger with our index finger at the same time. They're non-blocking inputs, and as a result, we can execute both actions on those two inputs simultaneously. So, with the inputs that I defined for my hardware, which was just simply going through all the available options for things that I can put in, I came up with these two groups, uh, specifically those for my flight stick and those for my mouse. First, flight stick. We have the X, Y, and Z, which is the twist axes. We have items on our index finger, which is the two-stage trigger, a, a secondary trigger just outside of that, and then a button that I call the outside button. Probably has an official name, I don't know but it's on the upper left of the outside of the stick. We also have access, as noted before, on our thumb to two hat switches, an analog thumbstick, a red button, and the lower hat switch. And then finally, we have a pinky button uh, as well that is uh, on the flight stick. There are other controls on the base of the flight stick that is not relevant for this because they are not immediately available to my hand. Secondly, on the mouse, we have, of course, the X and Y axes. We have our left mouse button with two inset buttons that are currently bound to my DPI settings. We have a mouse wheel that can be both scrolled up and down or pressed for a button, a middle mouse button. We have a right mouse button. And then in my particular mouse, I have a thumb button group with six total additional buttons. Now, if you can see from this change here, I have grouped these into sets that block input from the others in the same group. Essentially anything not grouped together I should be able to use simultaneously if somehow pushing every input at once were actually useful. And pro tip, it's not. However, you can see here, as noted previously, my index and thumb, while I can only do one thing in that entire group, they do not conflict with each other. They're not blocking. Now that we've defined a list of prioritized actions and those inputs that we can map those to, we're ready to start binding controls, right? We can just start figuring out what buttons go on there. Well, wrong. Before we do that, I want to talk about both resting position and input switching. Now, resting position refers to the placement of your hand and your fingers on the controls when we're not applying any inputs. It's, you know, our neutral state. Note that I said we're not applying any inputs. That doesn't mean that we're not prepared to do so. And in fact, the design of the flight stick and the mouse are specifically engineered to accommodate a resting position that puts inputs ready for instant use. The index finger rests on the trigger. The pinky finger rests on the pinky button. The left and right mouse buttons are underneath our index or middle fingers, and all these are readily available from our resting position with no effort at all. So, all of these inputs that we can do from our resting position are reserved for the most important actions, okay? Anything that we need to do instantly, we want to do that from the resting position. These actions should be practically an automatic response from our mind into the game through the controls. And then an additional consideration about the resting position, that it is at rest and should be comfortable for us. We could fly with some strange unintended grip that makes more inputs available from that, quote, resting position. But if our hands get fatigued from maintaining this grip, we will be ultimately less effective over time. You can see in this picture here that my resting position, of course, includes a grip with my thumb on the thumb stick, 
for reasons we'll discuss later. It's comfortable and it's easy to use. Now, we're also going to talk about switching inputs. Any inputs that are not part of that resting position are going to incur some sort of penalty to activate, right? This penalty is the delay between when our body acts and the inputs activated on the stick or the mouse. These are the inputs that are blocking each other and switching to a blocked input does require time. There's already a delay from going from the monitor to the eyes to the brain to making a decision to the muscles again to inputs and then onto the computer itself. That's a loop that takes time. If we add switching from one input to the another, that's going to add more time. The delay could be small. For example, moving my index finger off of the trigger and pushing up on the secondary trigger is very fast. There's very little travel between those points. However, the delay could be longer. As in this example here, moving my thumb from the lower hat or the button on the bottom right to the upper left hat will be much slower because the distance is greater. The muscles that have to be activated are, you know, more than just pushing a button from our resting position, for example. Furthermore, in an emergency scenario, we could accidentally switch to the wrong control and input the wrong action. And, you know, let's be honest, if we're already in some sort of panic and we don't have time to fix new additional mistakes on top of whatever was already going wrong, an accident like that could be fatal in the game. So instead, we need to take our knowledge of both the resting position for our controls and the need to switch inputs and sort of define what is not only the most important, but what do we need to switch to less frequently, right? We don't want to be in a position where we're constantly switching. We need that to be effective and immediate from the beginning. Now, all this may seem trivial or obvious, but it is worth thinking carefully about because uh, before beginning to assign actions, we need to know what we're able to do. And of course, in addition to the risk of being unable to effectively pilot our ships, there's always going to be some sort of retraining period that happens if we choose to reconfigure our controls after we've already spent some time learning something else. It's best to get it right first by thinking about it before we start. So, with all that said, let's talk about bindings a little bit. All that process resulted in this following for me. And as noted previously, I wanted to use my existing experience as much as possible to reduce the learning curve, right? So this meant that I was going to continue to use my mouse for both pitch and yaw, all right? As well as for the weapon controls and the throttle limiter. These are all the default actions of my mouse, and they'll suit it well. So as you can see in this picture here, I've left the pitch on the vertical mouse axis and the yaw on the horizontal. I also left the weapons groups on one and, well, not shown here yet, but zero and one on the left and right mouse buttons. And I also use the missile toggle and the throttle limiter on the mouse wheel itself. Those are the default actions. Nothing new to learn. On the other hand, the next remaining needs were going to be the unassigned axes. For the rotational axes, that was only the roll, but I had all three of the translational axes to use. This is because the mouse only has two that I can do, which, as noted previously, is pitch and yaw. So, with the remaining, I experimented with a number of different setups. I even moved roll to the mouse temporarily, which was a terrible idea because my brain was not used to that sort of setup. However, I finally settled on the following setup. First off, the forward and reverse was applied to the throttle style setup, you know, the uh, vertical axis on the mouse, or on the uh, flight stick. On the other hand, roll became the left and right, the x axis on my uh, flight stick. And then the vertical and horizontal strafe was applied to the analog thumbstick. Now, importantly, not using the z-axis, the twist axis of my flight stick is probably going to be the most controversial choice. All right, it's a solid feature of this particular model. However, for me, the twisting motion did not feel as intuitive to the degree that using a thumbstick did, probably from years of experience using gamepad thumbsticks. Uh, additionally, to be said, the range of motion on the twist is not so significant that the degree of precision would be any better or worse than using the thumbstick. And then finally, the 
twist motion itself happens inadvertently at times when using the other axes. Pushing forward is sometimes causing me to twist forward. This is all my fault, all right? This is all me learning to use a stick, some inadvertent application of it, um, somewhat to the degree that tilt from the omnithrottle changes it from a twist left-right to a more forward-back motion, like a motorcycle handle. But since I already had my major analog axes sorted already without using the Z axis, the twist, I just elected to forego it for using anything at all at this time. Now, continuing through the list of actions in priority, I next looked at the power triangle management. In this case, these were discrete actions that could never happen simultaneously, right? It's not possible to maximize power to both weapons and shields at the same time. Clearly, these actions can block each other without issue. However, I still needed to be able to maneuver in combat while switching these power levels around. Since my left thumb was going to be applied to the analog thumbstick, as you can see here, using one of the hat switches on the thumb, which is very traditional for dual stick users, was out of the question. I elected to use instead the additional mouse buttons and set each one to a max of the respective part of the triangle and include a reset option as well. In this case, I used my resting position to help select which actions were instant and which required me to switch input to reactivate. So, given that maximizing power to both weapons and shields are used the most frequently, while setting it to engines or even resetting it is much less frequent, the forward pair of these eight buttons you see here were assigned to the, I'm sorry, the four buttons you see here were assigned to the former and the others to the latter. Now, going back to the flight stick, for the rest of these controls that I needed to set up. I left the pinky button and the red thumb button to their defaults, noise and decoy countermeasures respectively. I mapped the decoy count option to the up and down of the lower hat switch. I felt like it was unlikely that I would need to manipulate the decoy count too often. So taking my thumb off of the thumbstick and putting it down there to change that was an acceptable choice at the time. I also applied it to the space brake on that control, as if I was applying space brake, I would not be trying to strafe at the same time, and again, would not need my thumb on the thumbstick. The trigger itself, being on the throttle, was being used for boost, since I did not need it for weapons, which are on the mouse. Missile count, however, was added to the secondary trigger's forward and back options, so I can adjust those on the fly without moving either hand entirely to a keyboard. For the outside button on the index finger, this was a slow input to switch to or from, so I didn't want it to use uh, anything urgent, so instead I chose to assign it to the interaction option, and I did combine it with the central hat switch to allow me to jump between the MFDs while I also used the mouse for the actual cursor control. Again, this allows me to keep my hand on the controls, even when doing actions that are not so much directly flight related, but still necessary for the control or manipulation of the ship. Finally, I set a few of the targeting options to the left hat switch. And while it's not ideal if I need to switch targets mid-combat, as I would be blocked from strafing at the same time, I still needed to be able to use those actions without removing my hand from the stick or the mouse. In either case, I'll still retain both forward and reverse thrust, as well as my rotational axes, and for the brief moment that I'm retargeting with my thumb, it's a pretty minor thing to give up. Now, I'm sure at this point, the biggest question you have is, how well does it work? And while I can't personally compare it to a dual stick setup, right, I don't have one of those available, I don't believe that I'm missing anything. Let's be honest, the mouse works great as a second sort of virtual joystick. You do have to pay attention to what you're doing with the mouse cursor, since the axes are input based on the relative position to the center, and it does not automatically return there, uh, whereas on a stick, if you, you know, let it go, it'll just spring back to the middle. So for the mouse, if you lose track of where you put it, right, your ship will likely be pitching and yawing in a way that makes you feel like you've lost control. That's not ideal. As I was learning to fly with this method, I found myself often messing up during PvP combat because I panicked and lost track of what I was doing. Obviously, that's not the control's fault. It's just going to take time and experience. At the same time, because the mouse doesn't return to center, you can actually do some things that are sort of not possible with most flight sticks. You know, you can sort of trim the control a little bit by moving mouse off center and leaving it there. 
as an example of what I like to do during jump town, if you put on cruise control and you tilt your ship to the right angle and you move the mouse off of it, you can take your hands entirely off the controls and just orbit. You can just circle a point. It's great for patrolling the skies over it, right? You don't want to be just sitting still, but also you don't want to be controlling the ship the entire time if you're just flying around in a big circle. Now, on the other hand, the flight stick, it gives me smooth control on my thrust and my roll axes, which does not exist at all with the keyboard's all-on, all-off key presses. The finer control on this is extremely noticeable, especially on light fighters. As an example, the anvil arrow feels very jerky and twitchy on a keyboard, and I did not like it. However, flying it with a flight stick it feels very nimble and smooth instead. I didn't enjoy it before, but that's changed because it's actually enjoyable to fly now. But separately, being able to control all of those and still use directional strafing at a time is a huge advantage. Previously, I would end up with weird or impossible key combinations, you know, trying to thrust forward while strafing down and left, and then you, you know, you realize that you want to roll and boost at the same time. Well, good luck with that. I hope you have enough fingers and they're all in the right spot. On the other hand, now I can do all of those at the same time and be comfortable and in control while doing so. The controls on the mouse and the flight stick have also increased my efficiency, I'll say, since I no longer have to release keys like WASD or let go of the mouse to reach over to something else, like if I want to put power to weapons, which is up on F5. If I do have to let go of the stick or the mouse, it's not for anything urgent because those controls are already at my fingertips. So, there you have it. In my opinion, the HOSAM setup gives me all the power of a dual stick setup. I can control the stick with a greater granularity than with a mouse and keyboard, but without having to invest in two separate flight sticks. And obviously, in the future, if I decide to switch to a HOSAS setup, I'm already halfway there. Like any other control scheme, you're going to have to learn to adapt to it, but as noted previously, the time required should be minimal. It takes advantage of the keyboard and mouse defaults to reduce the relearning that you have to do. That's everything. Whatever your reason for watching this video, I hope you found it helpful and interesting. Feel free to leave any comments about it, and I'll happily read and respond to them. You're also welcome to join the Frontier Consolidated Discord server, which I've linked below. I'm almost always available while playing there. Feel free to pop in and ask any questions or make any comments. In the meantime, have fun and fly safe. This is Hectate, over and out.